Hotel Metropole, located at the Place de Bourquet in Brussels, is a legendary Belle Epoque building in the heart of the city. The facade and the basement are part of the historic heritage of Brussels' capital region. Kings and heads of state such as Eisenhower and Charles de Gaulle have stayed in this famous hotel. Its golden book also contains signatures of eminent musicians and artists, including Toscanini, Bertolucci and Bejar. More recently, well-known personalities and VIPs from the worlds of sport and showbiz have visited the hotel. Internationally recognized scientists have also stayed here. For example, on the 24th of October 2015, when the European Physical Society met in Brussels. The European Physical Society, called EPS, is essentially an umbrella organization, which is representing 42 countries or 42 member societies, and also talking in the name of 130,000 physicists in Europe. On the other side, EPS is also a, number, um, a learned society which aims basically in representing uh, scientific excellence in Europe. We are working for outreach activities, bringing physics to the public, and also basically working for education, promoting physics to the young students in Europe. This ceremony included a presentation to the Hotel Metropole of the EPS Historic Site Award, a distinction that has previously been bestowed on 24 sites in 16 countries and is now being bestowed for the first time in Belgium. The criteria is, of course, to represent history of physics, which means it can be a building, it can be an instrument, it can be a location where great discovery has been done by famous physicists, for example, a Nobel laureate or a very important uh, group of physicists. It could be at a large-scale facility like at CERN. It could be on the mountain where you have cosmic ray discoveries. It could be a house where a famous physicist has lived. And for example, I give you the Einstein house where Einstein used to live when he did his famous discovery of the relativity in Bern in 1903 and 1905, for example. seeing what is behind this curtain. So we will officially pull out this curtain and say that now, from now on, the Hotel Metropole is a European Physical Society of Historic Science. So I'm pulling it, and now you can see the beauty of this plaque. We are very happy, and maybe we should welcome also the owner of the hotel. Please come here Please, for a picture. During his official address, Professor Franklin Lambert outlined the role of Hotel Metropole at the beginning of the last century, during a period of turbulence in classical physics. Why was physics in crisis? Well, simply because around the beginning of the 20th century, people realized that there was a contradiction between the predictions of classical theories and what was observed in the lab regarding properties of radiation, and that's of course uh, related to Planck's work, but also regarded the properties of matter, the simple thermal properties of matter, the fact that matters radiate energy and absorbs energy, the way in which that should happen was not, was something you could not explain with the classical theories. And then Ernest Solvay, a chemist from Elsinore who developed an efficient process to produce soda in 1861, took center stage. 
His patent laid the foundation for a very successful company that has grown into the famous multinational Solvay company of today. Solvay was not only a great industrialist, he was also a philanthropist and patron of the arts and sciences. My great-great-grandfather was fascinated with science, was very passionate about scientific research. And so having been successful as an entrepreneur, he decided he was going to bring together the best people in the world at the time uh, to uh, give, uh, to move on that particular question, which is what is, uh, how is nature made? And so he brought all these people together in his, in his city in Brussels, and that's how it got organized. The famous picture of the first Solvay Council on Radiation and Quanta shows the 23 brilliant minds that Ernest Solvay had invited to the Metropole Hotel from October the 30th to November the 3rd, 1911. Nine among them had already, or would subsequently, receive a Nobel Prize for physics or chemistry. The Polish-French Marie Curie, the young Albert Einstein, the famous Dutch professors Hendrik Lorentz and Carmeling Ollis, the Frenchman Jean-Baptiste Perrin, the Briton with roots in New Zealand Ernest Rutherford, the German physicists Max Planck and Wilhelm Wien, and the German chemist Walter Nernst, who had first suggested to Ernest Solvay that he should invite them to this conference. What was actually the, the result of the first conference? In some sense, it was disappointing because people came home without having an answer to the main questions. For instance, was Planck's theory the first one? Because Planck explained another theory in Brussels, but was either the first theory of Planck or the second one? Or was the theory of Sommerfeld the real answer or would they open a way to solve the crisis? Was the quantum condition the first one or the next one? Was the quantum condition a necessary thing? Or was it just a way to try to explain things? That was not clear when people came out of the conference. But on the other hand, Poincaré, who was a brilliant mind, who was really very much interested in the discussions, went back to Paris and he showed within a few weeks that the Planck condition, the quantization of energy, was a necessity in nature. But although many questions remained unanswered during the first Solvay Council, it was a turning point in the history of physics. The first Solvay Council was indeed a turning point. It was a turning point in science because a new model had been discovered to, uh, well, to, to, to make science or to at least communicate uh, uh, the, re the results of uh, different people and to have people discuss their results in a contradictory fashion. Uh, by doing that in a direct way, and at the international level, because it already happened that people would come together to discuss scientific issues, but not at an international level. The fact that it was at an international level was really something new, which originated with that first Solvay Council. But this is not all. The seeds for the International Solvay Institutes for Physics and Chemistry, as we know them today, were also planted at the first Solvay conference in Hotel Metropole. After the success of the first conference, Ernest Solvay thought that it would be important to have an institute in charge of continuing this tradition of uh, Solvay conferences, because these Solvay conferences played a crucial role in the de development of science, and also that this institute should have as a mission to support science in general, so not just organizing these conferences, but also give grants to brilliant young researchers or organize other activities. Now we are currently organizing in Brussels chairs where we invite uh, great scientists from all over the world to come to Brussels to give lectures on the research, to interact with the local researchers. So the so Solvay Institute is, is in a sense the instrument that has been created to organize the conferences but also to promote research. 
For example, the newly established International Solvay Institute already organized in 1913 the second Solvay Conference. On this occasion, and also on subsequent occasions, the conference was held in the Solvay Institute of Physiology in the Leopold Park in Brussels. Today, that building houses a high school, but in 1927, during the fifth Solvay Conference, 29 top scientists gathered here, including no fewer than 17 Nobel Prize winners. During the meeting, a memorable debate developed between Albert Einstein and the Danish physicist Niels Bohr about the interpretation of the newly formulated quantum theory. Now, what is quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is the theory, the physical theory, that explains the behavior of very small things, the microscopic world. The atoms, the molecules, the electrons, the atomic nucleus. Physicists realize that these objects behave in a strange way. For instance, they obey what we call the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which means that we can, which tells that we cannot simultaneously tell, tell how quickly an electron moves and where it is. So there is some uncertainty on the position and the velocity of an electron. And it took a very long time for physicists to really formulate the correct physical theory that would describe the strange world of the very small. The conflict in 1927 with Bohr was about the completeness of uh, quantum uh, theory or quantum mechanics. You see, Einstein believed that it wouldn't make any sense to do physics if you don't believe there is some reality independent of the fact that you observe it or not. And what the uh, new uh, theory uh, was, um, uh, was proposing was that reality was not something which you could describe independently of the way of observing the reality. So somehow this kind of objective reality had gone forever. If you can only predict probabilities of some events, then it seems that reality is governed by the laws of probability. And Einstein thought that this objective reality could not be just a matter of probabilities. And Einstein would usually phrase that by referring to God. So Einstein said, God does not play dice, which Bohr countered with, Einstein, stop telling God what to do. Words that have become legendary. But anyway, the quantum theory for which the foundations were laid at the first Solvay Council was from then on an established fact and illustrates, up till today, the importance of basic scientific research. Solvay conferences are very important for the daily life, but in a, an in, an a, long, in a long term way. So the Solvay conferences are devoted to, to, to what we call curiosity driven research. So physicists try to understand fundamental principles uh, on how nature works. But it's clear that any fundamental understanding will inevitably lead, lead to applications. And in fact, there are thousands of applications that we can trace to the understanding of quantum mechanics. If you think of, the, of all the electronics, all the electronics relies on quantum principles. The transistors, the, tr the way the transistors function is based on quantum mechanics. So the cellular phone would not exist if we had not understood quantum mechanics. In the same way, some fundamental developments in gravity, general relativity, enables us to understand the G to, to make a GPS work correctly. So our daily life is impactly uh, enormously by all this fundamental understanding. For Dr. Jeff Ongena, president of the Belgian Physical Society, this fact alone was already sufficient to bestow the historic site award to Hotel Metropole. But there is even more. The second point why we absolutely wanted this historic event here now is to show how important Belgium was and still is 
in developing modern physics and so that in fact young people see that it is important to study science to see the excitement of science and to see why it is, I mean, uh, important for the future of their children and coming generations. I think it's in this modern world very necessary that people know how this world is functioning. Without this knowledge, you cannot take the right decisions. So, I mean, more young people should really try to study science and we try to motivate them by showing what has happened here. The EPS Historic Site Award Ceremony was also portrayed in the presence of relatives of those Nobel Prize winners who attended here in 1911. And not surprisingly, the photo taken of them was a nod to the famous group photo of the first Solvay Council at Hotel Metropole more than a hundred years ago.